Just wanted you to appreciate my outfit. Hello everyone, I'm Leofrin and today I'd like to talk about three illustrations from this year's Inktober, aka Ozutober. It's a list of 30 women that I wanted to know more about. If you also like them, you can find them in my online shop. Finally, it's open. Yes. Let's start the video and I hope you enjoy it. So Inktober is supposed to be something that does not consume your entire life and it started consuming mine because I cannot let things go. It's an actual issue. So I thought if I started combining the prompts with tarot cards, which is something that I always wanted to do, that I thought it could make my life easier because each tarot card illustrated by Pamela Coleman Smith already has a composition that I could use and I would just do it randomly, attribute each card to the women that I'm still left to draw. So I was missing 22 women. There's 22 cards. I thought this is perfect. So without further ado, Let's start with Carmen Lira. Maria Isabel Carvajal Quezada. I hope I didn't butcher that. She was a writer from Costa Rica. She was a teacher. She was the founder of its first Montessori school. And she was a really advocate for education for poorer children as well. She was one of the founders of the Communist Party in Costa Costa Rica. That's why I drew her with bananas behind her because she was a really big part of the fight for workers' rights that worked in banana plantations. She's holding the education for all social classes, like these papers, uh, because in the magician card, is holding this gemstone kind of implies this ability to manipulate your life conditions to create new realities. So I think it's kind of cool that. She she got that card. Education was her big superpower. The fact that she had one and the fact that she wanted to spread it to as many people as possible. I just find it really interesting that she was also a critic of the party she helped found, which is not something that you see a lot. I just think it goes to show that her goal was not anywhere near her ego or like her need to be right. She just really wanted to change the world for the better and to just completely completely utilize her life in the service of others. That's why I also chose this picture of her to illustrate this card because I love how she's like smiling and daring to the camera. In the table you see that I just drew the symbols of the party mixed together with the materials the magician is using. Okay, so card number two is Niuta Teitelbaum, a fighter in the Second World War against fascist soldiers. Every card in the Major Arcana is a version of the Magician, High Priestess or the Fool. Really the Magician is the conscious and is more like a masculine archetype. The High Priestess symbolizes female archetypes, the subconscious mind. She has this like sea elements to her, there's the moon, the veil behind her, and she's in, in between these two pillars, black and white, with the idea of standing in the center of the absolute no, standing your ground and reject, rejecting any kind of change and openness, and, and then the yes, absolutely open to every possibility, the affirmation, you standing in the center of the of both of these realities i thought it was really interesting and in the tarot card she's all holding the torah facing her because she finds her own way within her religion i thought that was also very interesting because the character that ended up being with her, Niuta Teitelbaum, she risked her life countless times. She was tortured and she helped so many people. You have to be so brave, you have to be so certain of your own path to do what she did, like on a regular basis. This narrative that women are not able to fight, they were just staying at home crying for their husbands during the war, is just not true. And then I have the eye in the throat because of the throat charm and how much control she had over her voice because she had a lot of situations where she was a little bit like a spy that she had to pretend she was somebody else and 
to face that much danger and not let your voice tremble because you got away in, with a lot of things is amazing. I have her hair dark. She was in the Gestapo wanted list. She was called the little Polish girl with the golden braids. I kind of wanted to talk about that. Like she had to just completely detach from her humanity at the same time that she was so connected to it. But like something has to die inside of you for you to be able to do what she did. Yeah, I just wanted to show that, like how much she had to give up. And then the eight-pointed star, apparently someone told me of the eight-pointed star coming down in the apocalypse and touching the ocean and crushing everything. And I kind of wanted to, but the eight-pointed star is also represented as a holy star in other, uh, especially other cards in the tarot, uh, other religious symbolism. So I thought it was interesting to like give her own eight-pointed star coming out of her and touching the ocean, but you're not sure if it's gonna rise or if it's gonna dive into the ocean. And it's this balance between absolute destruction and heaven. This is new to Teitelbaum. Read about the Jewish women who resisted the Second World War. It's absolutely fascinating what, what these women did. So the third woman is Simone Weil. She was an Holocaust survivor. She was the first woman to be president of the European Parliament and she's most known for being the law of abortion in France. I, she got the cards number three, which is the Empress. And I'm gonna read you a little bit about her. It's about pleasure it's ruled by Venus. We're gonna see that each card has a Hebrew letter attached to it and this one I saw it meant door and I really like this idea. Basically it's like door to creativity to life. Like the Empress, some people say that she's pregnant so it's just like act of creation in absolute pleasure, like open to everything. Because she was such a big advocate for women's rights, I thought this card was also perfect for her, like by chance. I love when this happens. I also have like a crown made out of stars, her being president of the European Parliament could also have like her own crown of stars. So I have Simone Weil's eyes and they're crying and you will see crying in a lot of the illustrations that I made because a lot of these women had to suffer so much during their lives to be able to do everything that they did. I had a lot of conversations about how men have to hide their feelings and their emotions. It shows that any kind of position of power women also want to uh, partake, you have to act like a man and that will require you to repress your emotions. That's so terrible in the world we live in today. I just wanted to like give them a place to cry and my illustrations. Anyway, a lot of the things that I do are intuitive, so it's also interesting for me to like trying to figure myself out, but this is why I think I cannot resist to draw tears on, on these women. Because this card symbolizes pleasure, I drew this like shell with the pearl inside that is luxurious, abundant, so these green fields. To show how much Simone Weil accomplished in her life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're curious about any other illustration that I was posting about. Uh, I would love to make more videos about this, like just explaining my Frankenstein of, I don't know, mystical collage that I like to do. Uh, so yeah, let me know. I love doing those. If you like the illustrations, you can find them in my online store, as you've seen, um, with some originals, some prints also from the Inktober from 2021 that I really like. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you very soon. Bye. Thank you.